Hey guys, Mark here, and this is the new M1 MacBook Air, one of the first new Apple laptops with their own silicon in them. I've been testing this guy over the past 24 hours or so, and I'm just gonna come right out and say it, this thing is absolutely mind-blowing. The performance you get out of this MacBook Air punches way above its weight class, especially when compared to previous MacBooks with Intel processors, and it does so while maintaining incredible battery life. First, let me just touch on the design for a few seconds and then we'll get straight into my performance testing. This MacBook Air is not at all different from the previous MacBook Airs we saw earlier this year with Intel processors. It's got the exact same design, more or less the same keyboard, mostly the same display, although it has now the P3 color gamut from the more expensive models, so that's pretty cool. Everything else here is pretty much the same, and that's fine. The keyboard is nice and quiet and it's got scissor switches for better reliability and tactile feedback. The trackpad is still nice and big and it feels great and I have absolutely zero complaints with anything in regards to build quality. It's a solid laptop. We do only get two USB-C ports on the left side and a 3.5 millimeter jack on the right, but it's a MacBook Air, so it's fine. Okay, so like I said, inside this MacBook Air is Apple's new M1 chip. Because this new chip runs on ARM, it means that x86 software that you're used to using doesn't run natively on this MacBook, not without some help. That's where Rosetta 2 comes in. This MacBook Air will use Rosetta 2 to translate the x86 apps you normally use into a set of code that ARM M1 chips can understand. You'll get a small decrease in performance, but this means that you should be able to run just about everything your Intel Mac could run, and we'll test out the performance of that in just a sec. Interestingly enough though, there's no active cooling in this laptop whatsoever. Not a single fan. It's just the chip and a big heatsink. And I was expecting this thing to be an absolute volcano when it comes to running intense loads, but, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but it barely even gets warm to the touch. If you're running benchmarks over and over for a long period of time, yes, it will heat up, but the keys never get uncomfortable to touch and the palm rest stays cool all the time. So let's run some synthetic benchmarks. These are not all that important because they really don't represent real world usage all that well, but they are fun to test and compare to other systems. In Geekbench 5, this MacBook Air ran a score of 1728 single core and 7546 multi-core. To show you just how crazy high of a score that is, I compared it to my gaming rig which has an i7 9700K, 16 gigs of RAM and an RTX 2070 Super in it, and my i9 iMac with 40 gigs of RAM and an RX 580. The MacBook Air beat both machines in single core and only slightly lost to the spec'd out iMac in multi-core. So yeah, pretty crazy. But like I said, not all that indicative of real world use, so let's do some more testing. The first thing I did was open up 10 different tabs in Google Chrome, because I know some of you are monsters that don't close out your tabs periodically. Keep in mind that this is an unoptimized app running through Rosetta 2. Chrome is being updated for M1, but it's not out yet at the time that I recorded this video. Even still, I was able to freely switch between all 10 tabs without lag, two of which were 4K YouTube videos that were playing simultaneously. So no problems there. Then I did some gaming. Yes, gaming on a MacBook Air. With the new M1 chip, it's actually shockingly viable. Because it's a Mac, there aren't a crazy amount of games available, but the ones I tested ran very, very well. Each one of these games, with the exception of Oceanhorn 2, were running through Rosetta again, so if these games ever do get optimized for Apple Silicon, you should see an even higher bump in performance. The one that really shocked me was Dirt Rally. At full native resolution, which is slightly higher than 14. 40p and the ultra settings, the MacBook Air was getting a solid 49 to 50 FPS on average, and if you cut the resolution in half, that shot up to around 78 or 80 FPS on a MacBook Air with no active cooling. Not only that, but this is the base model Air with one less GPU core. It's worthwhile to note that I did go for the 16 gigs of RAM upgrade, but that shouldn't do a whole lot to gaming performance. Then I had to try out some video editing, and just for good measure, I put it up against my top-end iMac that I use every single day to edit my videos. First, I made both machines render out the same 5-minute 4K 8-bit timeline in Final Cut Pro, and the results might surprise you. The iMac finished first, of course, at 3 minutes exactly, but keep in mind that this is an 8-core i9 iMac with 40 gigabytes of RAM and discrete graphics, so I was expecting the iMac to finish the render in like half the time or something. But I was wrong again. This little MacBook Air did the render in just over four minutes. It was only around 25% slower, which is absolutely insane. 
Then I made both machines do another 4K render, this time 12 minutes long. The iMac pulled a little bit further ahead this time, but not by much, around nine minutes for the MacBook Air and six and a quarter for the iMac for a total of 30% in performance difference. And the MacBook stayed perfectly silent since it has no fans. Not only does it render fast, but I can freely scrub through the unrendered timeline and playback footage easily with zero drop frames, even on the better quality mode in playback settings. And there's plenty of color grading effects and titles in these clips. Now, what about battery life? Well, I did all of the testing I just mentioned, plus several hours of watching YouTube videos with the speakers on, writing a script, and downloading about 200 gigabytes worth of games and software from the internet all on a single charge. I got eight full hours before the 10% battery remaining warning, and that's a crazy amount of battery life considering I was stressing this laptop to the max for a lot of that time. Apple claims that you can get around 16 full hours of video playback with this laptop, and I believe them. So here's the thing, I came into this Apple silicon transition with a healthy amount of skepticism. But to be honest, I've been completely blown away. Not by just the performance and the battery life, but also how smooth this transition has been so far. I've been testing every single app and game I use in my daily life on my Intel Mac, and I haven't encountered so much as a hiccup so far, even in the apps that are using Rosetta 2 to run them. They just open and run like they always have. I'm willing to bet that like 95 plus percent of the people that buy this MacBook Air won't even notice that there's anything different about the software experience. It's that good. I mean, obviously it's running Big Sur, so you're gonna notice a bit of a visual difference, but on the compatibility side of things, it's great. Before you run out and buy one of these though, I do have a few words of warning. Number one, it's very early days. We haven't had enough time with these new MacBooks to really see if there are any growing pains with Apple Silicon. Who knows, a month down the road, we could see some massive, serious problems. Number two, I will never be able to test absolutely every piece of software available for the Mac. There more than likely are many apps out there that just won't run well or at all on M1. If you're considering this laptop for work, I'd probably advise against it. You don't want something that you depend on to be potentially unreliable. And finally, number three, this is in all likelihood going to be the worst Apple Silicon Mac that Apple will ever sell. This is a first generation MacBook Air. Everything that comes after it can only get better, so don't be surprised if you buy this one and then Apple suddenly comes out with a much better version in just a few months. But beyond those three warnings, I am so incredibly impressed with this new Apple Silicon MacBook Air. It punches so far above what the other Intel Macs can do. And to top it all off, Apple made it the same price as the other Intel MacBook Airs. <sighs> I just want to tell you to go out and buy one. Anyway, just let me know if you want to see more videos on what this MacBook Air can do in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to support my channel. And as always, have a great day.